After trading for Anthony Beauvillier, the Blackhawks have many more opportunities to make some more trades before the trade deadline arises. Now we'll be talking about what the possibilities of these trades will be in this video, but before we get into that, we noticed that 83% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. So if you're looking for a spot to get all your Blackhawks news, you're in the right spot. And we're very, very, very close to 1,000 subscribers, so if you would hit the sub button if you haven't already, that would mean the world to us. But like I said, we're going to get into this really quick here. So basically, I think we have two possible options of the Blackhawks of what they can do in the trade market. One being acquire picks from other uh, other teams for taking on some heavy contracts. That's one thing the Blackhawks are very capable of doing due to their immense amount of cap space. Right now, they have $13.3 million. So I think the Blackhawks will be uh, willing to do that, you know, maybe be a third team into a trade, maybe take on a bit of cap for someone. Uh, yeah. We've seen it happen a lot in the recent years of the NHL. Uh, Minnesota did a few times last year. They took on, I believe, two or three contracts uh, or parts of contracts for other teams and get pick and got picks out of it, which is, you know, a cheating way to get picked, but it's absolutely worth it. And I think a second <laughs> option would be to just add more to this offense. We know how depleted this offense has been with the loss of Corey Perry, Taylor Hall, Andreas Athanasiu, and many, many more, you know, yeah. this offense has gotten very, very shorthanded and they need something to get that boost up again. Fit on the power play. I think there's many options that they can do. One thing I want to talk about first is the guy like they've seen in the thumbnail, Josh Anderson. The Montreal Canadiens know what, and I'm sure you can attest to this. Josh Anderson is not great. I think that he really needs to change the scenery, you know, so I think a Chicago maybe getting him, maybe Montreal adding a pick to it for a pick swap. Montreal could easily get rid of that contract with the Blackhawks, and Blackhawks could definitely yeah. get a higher pick than Montreal's giving up. So, no, what do you think about something like this? I think this is definitely a very smart option for the Blackhawks to do in the situation they're in now, where, you know, they're not really going anything mm -hmm. for get as many picks as you can for the time being with the amount of cap space you have, because a lot of contracts this season, uh, after the season, are ending. So, you know, they can re change yeah. the whole lineup if they wanted to. And Josh Anderson's a weird one for me, you know, to be completely honest with you. You know, the Habs locked him up long term. I think it was seven years at five and a half million. And I mean, the guy's got two points or, or three points in 25 games. You know, he hasn't scored a goal in, in seems like forever. But I, I do think he could, like you said, benefit from a change of scenery. You know, he's a really good skater. He, he brings a lot to a team. He's I think he's six four you know 230 240 range he's a he's a big speedy winger you know you can never go wrong with those guys so i i do think he could he could fit on the blackhawks i do like the move and i do like the idea of the uh the pick swap but i do think there would have to be some sort of salary retention i really do i mean you, you can't pay five and a half million for a guy who you know who's supposed to be a 20 goal scorer who doesn't even have a goal yet this season so i i think you might see you might see a third team kind of broker it. I do. There has been Josh Anderson trade rumors before, like past couple of years. Obviously, I've seen New Jersey. I've seen you know maybe the Blackhawks get in on on that. Maybe they say okay, we'll take twenty percent of the contract if you give us a, a fifth or a sixth round pick, kind of similar to the Ryan O'Reilly move. So I I I could see Josh Anderson landing on the Blackhawks. I could also see the Blackhawks being a third third team uh, broker sort of sort of deal. Yeah, and no, I want to talk about that as well. The third team broker, just say we've seen some rumors recently of Josh Anderson looking for Pittsburgh. Check out Habs Digest if you haven't with Josh. Uh, he made a video on that a few yeah. days ago. <laughs> um, you know, having that third team of being Chicago gaining, you know, like you said, twenty percent of the cap, and then you know getting maybe even a third or fourth round pick because obviously. The, the Pittsburgh Penguins are in a win-now scenario with Malkin, Crosby, just getting Eric yeah, Carlson. So they're pretty str uh, stricken on cap. So being able to take a bit of that from uh, from the Pittsburgh Penguins, giving it to Chicago and getting a pick out of it, I, you know, something like that would absolutely be worth it, I think, for the Blackhawks. And there's also many, many players around the NHL, you know, who are longer-term, teams want them, but just can't afford it for those, you know, the, the entire term. So the Blackhawks could definitely yeah. step in on any of those, and I think it's a very smart idea for what they're doing right now. Um, the situation they're in, I should say. But the other option that we have is, you know, yeah. adding to the forwards. We've seen Anthony Beauvillier, like I said, he got added to this team. He's yet to play, you know, Nazan gotten there. He's had some visa issues trying to get into the U.S. However, adding him to this lineup was a major addition, I think. And, you know... I think they could definitely add some more. I think it is too, yeah. Yeah, we've seen some major frustrations from this team. Uh, Nick Foligno voicing his opinion on the power play as well, which, you know, both have been 
not great, but I think there's a major possibility for both of these. You know, these two play uh, power play lines right here are not bad by any means. You know, the players on these lines should absolutely be producing, but it just hasn't worked out. So, you know, I, th I think a change of... Uh, a change of maybe a few positions, maybe a switch of Seth Jones and Kevin Korchinski, then maybe you move some people around, and I think that would be an absolutely Big great idea. One mentioned, uh, one name that we've been yeah. seeing a lot has been Connor Garland, you know, from the uh, Vancouver Canucks. Now, I'm not sure how much or how willing the Blackhawks are, make, are willing to make another trade with Vancouver after just doing one, but I think Connor Garland's another name that we yeah. could see who would add so much to this offense. Um, just his whole style of play. He's quick. He's he's pretty good. Had a major drop off after leaving Arizona, but we've seen what he can do while in Arizona. And I think adding him to the Chicago lineup, if possible, would be an absolutely fantastic idea. No, I want to know what you think about this one as well. We know the power play has been a bit tough recently. It's uh, been in a bad spot, but yeah. more more forwards on this team, the better. Instead of bringing up a very very young group of uh, offensive players, this makes a lot more sense than the Josh Anderson one to me. You know, Vancouver is. For seems like for decades have been you know struggling to get cap and, and find ways to sign players and, and free up some money. So I mean, get Connor Garland out of in Vancouver and bring him into to Chicago, a team that has like you said loads of cap space, almost thirteen million. You pointed out there earlier, and yeah, I mean he's not the same player he was in Arizona. Obviously, he's not going to be. I think he had like forty or fifty or sixty points there in his last year. Or, or something. He had a good year there a couple he had, years ago. He had ago. a good year, yeah. And I mean, we we haven't seen, yeah, we haven't seen that player in in, in Vancouver. So maybe to shake up, you know, playing with Connor Bedard, Kevin Kurtinsky, you know, some speedy guys, some some highly offensively talented guys. Maybe he go he reaches that uh, that's that point that point total again. And I, you know, I think it's it's a it could be uh, it could be done for Chicago. Yeah, no, yeah, I like I like the idea of adding some more offense to this team. It's obviously very good the offense. It's definitely a strong suit on this team, um, but you know the defense has been has been okay. It's not been a a, a thing of a problem. There's no been no no issues with it. I would say, it's just been the production of the offense has been great. You've seen the frustration coming from Connor Bar uh, Connor Bedard. Nick Foligno being the unofficial captain of this team has definitely voiced his opinion on all this kind of stuff, and I think a few changes need to be made. You know. It's a good time for the Blackhawks to be struggling right now because they're not, you know, they're not going for a playoff run. They're not in any, uh, in any deep uh, advance in the central, I should say. Um, so, you know, having these struggles now is fine, but I also like the idea of, you know, being that 13 broker like we talked about originally, mainly because of their draft picks. They have a that lot over the next three years. Um, so add, I think adding to this as much as you can over this time, and then, you know, around 25, 26, those years is when the Blackhawks, I think, are, you're going to see them start to become uh, a real contender, like a real problem for teams around the NHL. So getting as many picks as you can in these years, I think would be a fantastic idea, whether you make the pick, whether you make a trade using those picks, whether you trade the player you draft with those picks, you know. Having as many draft picks, draft picks, exactly, yeah, you know, having as many draft picks as you can yeah. is definitely ideal for the Blackhawk situation. Can't go wrong. No, you can't go wrong at all. You're right, Noah. And having being a 13 broker, like you said, I think is what the Blackhawks really need to do this season. They can take a lot of advantage of that. Whether it's teams looking for you know a one year uh, loan player, taking 50 percent of that, and then taking another 25, like we've seen with Ryan O'Reilly. And doing that, I think, would be a really, really good idea for the Blackhawks. But, you know, there's lots of time left before the trade deadline. I think the Blackhawks will make a few more moves prior to the deadline and maybe even at the deadline. Yeah, they're, they're going so through. I would like to let you, you, I want you guys to comment down in the comments below who you think the Blackhawks should go after, who they should get rid of, what they should change. We want to hear it. We want to get some opinions on this going into this season and uh, see, you know, let, let us know what you think they can do to try to fix this power play as well. That's one thing that we've been seeing a lot of concern with lately. So that's all we have for this video. Like I said at the beginning, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We're very, very close to 1,000. And it would mean the world to us if we could hit that uh, before Christmas. So make sure to hit the sub button if you haven't already. But like the video if you have enjoyed. That's all we got for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.